Well, I want to thank everyone for coming this morning. Um, you know, we just saw how important our first responders are with, with Hurricane Izell and Julio approaching our shores. And if the worst would have happened, we would have called on all of our first responders, including the great team from EMS. I mean, they're out there every day, every single day, saving lives. And for the most part, we don't know what they do, but they have stories that are real heroes on a regular basis. And we depend on them. What we do here at the City and County of Honolulu in terms of getting people out into people's homes, onto our beaches and everyone else to make sure that those who are sick and needing help are there. And those are our paramedics and our EMT folks. For years and years and years now, these folks have been overworked, way overworked. And they are highly trained. In fact, our paramedics and EMT guys are some of the most well-trained in the entire state of Hawaii, more than the national average. And we're really proud of that. And they work really hard to be on the cutting edge of, of the best techniques, the best procedures in saving lives. But because there are so many demands placed on them, they're required in many cases to work more than eight hours a day. They're asked to stay over for a second shift for another eight hours. And their lives as a result are harder to plan. They can't be home for dinner when they tell their spouses they'll be home. They can't be there for the graduation of one of their children uh, when they plan to be. They can't be there to celebrate an anniversary because they're asked to stay on another eight hour shift. And this is, we should not treat our first responders, our paramedics and our EMT folks in that way. And over many years now, we've been trying to see what could we do to improve the working conditions for these, this group of people over multiple administrations, a lot of talk, but never actually accomplishing the goal of seeing if we couldn't make it better. And the very good news is very recently, we signed an agreement with the UPW to go to a 12-hour work shift from an eight-hour work shift for our highly trained EMT and, per, and paramedic personnel. And we're really, really proud of this fact. And it's all about making sure that those guys who are on the front lines of saving lives are treated more fairly, are given more certainty into their work schedule, so that they're rested in between, so they can go home and take care of their families and make sure that everyone is taken care of. This is what this is about. It could not have happened, and I repeat, it could not have happened without Dayton Nakanilua and the folks at the UPW stepping up and saying, let's get this deal done. And they did so, and they worked really, really hard over the past three or four months, yeah, Dayton? Yes. Nonstop to get it done. And I want to thank Dayton from the bottom of my heart, and I think the people of this island need to thank uh, the union for making something happen that looked impossible in the past. I also want to thank Mark Rigg, who is the head of our EM EMS, and Carolee Kubo, who's head of the Department of Human Resources, and of course the entire team that put this together. With this, I want to turn it over to Dayton to say a few words, and Dayton, I just want to say thanks so very much. Thank you. There we go. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and, and good morning. It is indeed a pleasure to be here, uh, to be part of this announcement of this very, very important change in the operations of the emergency medical services on the island of Oahu. Uh, this change is in the form of a pilot program. And what, as the mayor has said, this pilot program uh, calls for a 12-hour work schedule involving uh, most of the units that are out in the field. Uh, we will still have four units that will be operating on an eight-hour uh, schedule providing services uh, 16 hours a day. But uh, for sure, the main uh, part of the uh, services provided will be on 12-hour uh, work schedules for a 24-hour period. Uh, we believe that the concerns of the city uh, has been addressed with this uh, pilot program, as well as improving the quality of, of working conditions of the affected members of our union, and as, as well as the quality of their uh, personal lives. Uh, I believe the critical part of this pilot program is that it provides the opportunity for the employer, in this case the city and the department, on a joint basis with the union to meet at least on a quarterly basis, at least on a quarterly basis, uh, thereby giving the parties the opportunity, if necessary, to meet much more often than that on a quarterly basis 
to tweak the program, to make revisions, to make changes where the parties uh, deem it necessary. We want to ensure both parties are committed uh, to the success of this pilot program. The pilot program will be for a duration of one year, and uh, during that time, uh, I'm certain that the parties will work towards achieving success, maintaining the quality of this very important service to the different communities on the island of Oahu. So again, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Dayton. For your, really your words and to your uh, management team. Thank you. Uh, we did have a committee of uh, union members that were engaged and involved over this entire process. And while the hard work did occur within the last uh, four or five months, that the discussion and conversation of an alternative work schedule had been ongoing for an extended period of time. So again, I want to I want to thank you, uh, Mayor, for, for uh, your effort in this initiative as well. Uh, without your leadership, without your commitment um, to the members of this union, but more certainly to the public, those of your constituents made this negotiations a success. Thank, thank you. you so very much. Thanks for those kind words, and thanks for your teamwork on this. Thank you. Um, on August 31st, we'll, we will be implementing a 12-hour schedule in EMS. Um, this is an historical day for us. We have been on the eight-hour schedule for around 35-plus years. Um, we got to the point where that schedule just wasn't working anymore. Um, we, we met, uh, we came up with a, with, a, with a plan, and I just want to thank the mayor for personally getting involved to help with this. I thank the UPW for all their uh, all sitting down with them and, and hashing this thing out. I'd like to thank Carolee Kubo, who has been a great help in the negotiating of the 12-hour schedule. I'd like to uh, thank Eddie Fujioka for getting involved, and uh, Eddie was a big help in uh, providing uh, a lot of uh, uh, planning and, uh, for the schedule, and, um, and so here we are. Um, but most of all, I'd like to thank the uh, paramedics and the EMTs. Uh, they've been putting their lives on hold uh, for this to happen. They haven't been able to go home to their families. Uh, one of the goals of the 12-hour schedule was to ensure that they go home, uh, provide them with a better lifestyle. They will, will be working less days a month. Um, they will be getting more pay, which they do deserve. Um, so it provided us with an opportunity to compensate them for what they really do on a day-to-day -day basis. So I want to thank you for being here and uh, thank all that was involved. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate it. Carolee, a few words. I just want to thank the UPW and the mayor for all their commitments to getting this 12-hour schedule done. It truly is a momentous day here in Hawaii, and we hope we can recruit and retain all our EMTs. Just like Kenny here. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Carly. I do want to emphasize something. So what this means by a 12-hour work day is that they're going to have three and four-day week work shifts, meaning they'll come to work one week for three days, another week for four days, which means they have more time to be at home, to rest, to be ready, like we just heard now, to go out and save a life. And I think this is important. The other thing I want to emphasize is, as Dayton said, it is a pilot. Some people may not like the, the timing, you know, 12 hours, 12 to 12, and they'll be open to making adjustments. Like any pilot, we're rolling it out to see what works best. We want to accommodate the work schedules of the members of the MS, and so we're going to be very flexible on this. But we're starting off from 12 midnight to 12 noon, noon right? Yes, and sir. we're going to see how that works. But as you know, um, Dayton Nakani Lua and his team is always very, very receptive to their members and their concerns. And should adjustments need to be made, they'll look at it very closely. Yes, at least quarterly, if not sooner, depending on what kind of feedback we get as we roll out the pilot. Once the year goes by, we'll look to make this permanent. But at that point, we'll have a lot of information on what works best so that we can make sure our EMT and paramedics are the best in the nation and out there saving lives around this island every single day. So with that, if I left anything out, if anyone else wants to step up and emphasize anything, would you like 
Anyone? Eddie, want to say anything? No? no? Sure. Yeah, come on up. Is that okay? <laughs> All right. That's fine. fine. Yeah. Come on. Um, I thought uh, we never come to this day. Uh, we've looked at uh, alternative scheduling for over 20 years. And uh, I'd like to thank Dayton, the mayor, and uh, Carol Kubo, and uh, our director, Mark Rigg, especially. They all supported this um, project, and uh, it provides more weekends off, more days off, more pay, and the less chance of being stuck. Um, thank you. Thank you, Eddie. So with that, we'll open up to questions. To anyone who has questions. Mayor, what started, what does the thought process of going 12 to 12, why not 8 to 8, or some other time frame? You want to answer that, Dayton? I think so. Uh, that was a uh, decision uh, both management and the union had some real difficulty with. Uh, this uh, EMS, the, the membership and those uh, employees that are di directly affected uh, by this uh, pilot program, uh, I would say with amongst all of them that there was a difference of, uh, of uh, their preference. Uh, ultimately, it came down to uh, the members of the uh, of our committee uh, making a decision on the behalf of those affected. And as we have had uh, meetings uh, throughout all of last week, save for Friday, uh, with the uh, membership, uh, they're uh, being informed that this is a pilot with the opportunity for a tweaking for change and depending as we roll out uh, this initiative what kind of feedback we get that the openness of both parties the city and, and the union have exhibited that uh, whatever change we deem necessary will be made including that of uh, the, the schedule on the subject of the 12 to 12 schedule um, we understand there was a petition from a bunch of the membership opposing going from 12 to 12. Um, why then not go to the membership for a vote on this change if there is division? Well, again, through our uh, practice of union democracy, the uh, committee was uh, held the uh, decision authority in their hands. And again, as I explained earlier, it wasn't an easy decision to make, but given all the, the factors all the uh, things that uh, they deal with uh, on a daily basis, and just perhaps wanting to move this pilot program forward. Uh, the hours of uh, work of 12 noon and noon to 12 uh, was established. And as I've said, uh, while there was a petition uh, submitted to my office, uh, we dealt with that and with the meetings that we scheduled uh, for the membership throughout all of last week, uh, those concerns were addressed. Uh, the bid uh, for this new work schedule amongst all uh, affected uh, individuals uh, started yesterday. And I would say uh, my personal observation was that the energy, uh, the response of the affected uh, members was truly positive. What are the overtime costs and how much is this going to save? I believe that's part of uh, the data and uh, analysis that will be occurring during uh, the period of this uh, pilot. Uh, and I'm certain that uh, part of the 12-hour uh, uh, work schedule that we've, uh, we're moving into will uh, be part of uh, saving costs as well as improving the uh, quality of work and the quality of the personal lives of our members as well. Okay, so who can answer how, how much is over time? How much is going to be saved? Yeah, one of our goals um, in working on the 12 hour schedule was to provide some financial incentives for our. EMTs and paramedics to stay in the department and continue working. Um, one of our problems was were that people were leaving for other agencies, for nursing, and they weren't satisfied with the pay and the uh, 
and the, and the work that uh, EMS uh, was, was providing them and their families. So it really was an opportunity for us to provide the employee with some financial incentives to help retain our employees um, with the goal of filling our vacancies. And when we fill our vacancies, we could actually open up more units. Um, the city is a very busy city. Uh, EMS is taxed, especially in town. And one of our goals was to put ourselves in a position to open up more units. We believe we've done that. To answer your question, uh, uh, generally speaking, about a 20% uh, increase. Those uh, costs are included in um, meal incentives, a nighttime differential, and built-in overtime. Uh, as far as overtime savings, we expect to save about one point, our goal is to save about $1.5 million the first year. You said it was a bidding process uh, for, is it based on seniority or is that based on your serve? How does, how does that bidding process, because I'd imagine the younger guys would be stuck with it. The, the bidding process, as uh, you may be well aware of, in, in different workplaces, not only in the public sector, but private as well. Uh, for us in, in this uh, affected membership, uh, the uh, bid process is based upon first uh, their job classification, and then secondly on their uh, departmental seniority date. We understand that there was a change as a result of this change in that uh, district supervisors, all supervisors now have uh, take priority and get priority in terms of scheduling over folks who may have 25 years or, or just folks with seniority, based on seniority, is that correct? Uh, there was a change over uh, the bid selection process uh, that have occurred over the recent years. Uh, this change though is a provision that already exists in our uh, collective bargaining agreement uh, to follow uh, the selection uh, through uh, job classification and departmental seniority uh, first. And so uh, this change merely brings into compliance the bid process that has been in a part of the contract uh, for a number of years. Hey, Dave, in full disclosure, my wife works for EMS. I know you have to <laughs> 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 I, I know that too. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> So when oh. you speak, you're speaking on behalf of your wife. No, no, no. <laughs> she doesn't get overtime. <laughs> so uh, there is no overtime then? It's built in? Uh, the, so, uh, well, let me put it this way. If I come in for, to fill another person's 12-hour shift, do I get overtime? Yes. Or not? Oh, what is the rate? Time and a half. Time and a half. And what was the salary range before the built-in overtime? Uh, the salary range uh, affecting uh, the members in this unit uh, remains unchanged. As uh, Director uh, Riggs uh, pointed out, the incentives and the uh, built-in change in their pay is primarily based upon, uh, first, the uh, providing of work in uh, let me see how I can put it. In the 36-hour uh, work week, uh, that is being treated as a full-time, as though an employee worked 40 hours. So in that week, uh, anything over 36 hours is based on time and a half. In the week where employees will be working four days of that week, that's a 48-hour work week. And built into the program, is that eight hours over the 40 will be based on time and a half. Uh, additionally, with the uh, night shift differential and the uh, meal allowance that is built, built into this uh, pilot program, those are the uh, incentives that add to the, the pay of the affected uh, members of the unit. Why did, you, why did you not make it separate where they won't have to pay income tax on a higher salary rate and make it as like a subsistence or something? Well, if we could work with the IRS and bring them into these <laughs> negotiations, and so as we don't run a fall of uh, federal law, uh, I, I think we would be very open to uh, having 
income be tax free? <laughs> well, it's not income. So it's the, meals. Mark mentioned vacancies. Yeah. Can anybody give us an update on the vacancies in the department that's been a problem for a while? Currently, about 35 vacancies. Out of 200? Yeah, about 35 vacancies. Um, you know, we have, we're working with KCC, Copy Line Community College, which trains our EMTs and paramedics. And uh, they've actually held another EMT class this summer. Um, normally, they only have two a year, so this year they're doing three a year. And um, next year, we, um, we expect them to do the same. So our recruitment numbers will be greater. And uh, keep in mind, we do schedule an MICT or a paramedic class every January. And we normally put between 10 and 15 EMTs into the paramedic class to train for approximately a year to, to become certified as state paramedics. Are there any provisions to sort of uh, make gaming the system not as easy? Well, one of the impacts that the overtime has had um, is the impact on the employment, employee retirement system as well. And so the, to keep in mind, there used to be shifts where you could work overtime shifts pre-shifts, there were overtime shifts post-shifts, and then there were overtime on days off or recall overtime. So the pre and the post-shift overtime is now non-existent in the 12-hour shifts. After 12 hours, the employee has to go home. They will have over, overtime opportunities when they come in on their day off now. So we eliminated the pre and the post shift overtime. For the 12 hour shift. <coughs> Is there still such thing as mandatory overtime? That's what our, one of our objectives was to completely eliminate mandatory overtime. So is that written into the new contract? It, well, it's written into the contract that if an employee has to stay for some reason, um, 18 hours, let's say, if they get, if, if by chance they get stuck, we provide them with the next day off paid. The next day of work paid, excuse me. What's that the, what's the next that? day they work, they, they don't have to come in the next day to get paid if they work for 18 hours plus on their shift. So not the next calendar day, but the next day they're rescheduled. That's correct. And what are the salary ranges right now? The old one and the new one, or I don't have those numbers in front of me. Um, paramedics, fifty-four thousand. Yeah. Okay. We'll get we'll get that to you later, Wayne. The Wayne. Bottom line: Don't quit your day job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so again, back to the, the the noon to midnight, midnight to noon schedule. That's something then that's going to be revisited after three months. Is that correct then? Well, again. Uh, as we've all shared uh, so far, uh, we want to uh, have this uh, pilot program uh, start. And so we will be starting with uh, 12 midnight to 12 noon uh, hours of work and noon to uh, midnight. Uh, during uh, the uh, experience that will be achieved with the rollout of, of this initiative, and the feedback that we get from affected members, uh, not only with regards to the hours of work, but anything else that uh, may come to uh, our attention uh, will be addressed at least on a quarterly basis uh, and even more so. From your perspective, Nathan, what would make this pilot program, since you've mentioned it 12 times now, what would make it permanent? What would make it permanent? Uh, success and I believe that as I said earlier both both parties will be working towards achieving that uh, if I were uh, Mark and, and the mayor uh, their goal is uh, cost savings and part of the measuring rod with regards uh, perhaps in their view I don't want to speak for them would be uh, how much of a cost savings was achieved and I think for both parties uh, the quality of the services uh, provided uh, to our communities throughout the island is of critical importance. And through the, this initiative, uh, we are very hopeful that the closing of units will not be occurring. 
and that the full force and effect of this critical services provided by our members will be carried off, carried out most uh, effectively and efficiently uh, throughout this pilot. And uh, once we are able to uh, evaluate and uh, give a critical analysis to the data that uh, we review, if success is achieved, we move forward. We're told that as a result of this agreement, um, the city has agreed not to investigate any sick leave abuse. And the, you know, is that written in? Is that language that's now being written into the contract, or? <clears throat> uh, for the term of this pilot program, uh, the parties agreed to waive a certain provision of our collective bargaining agreement, and uh, with that, uh, with that waiver investigations of uh, sick leave abuse or uh, patterns of sick leave have been waived for the period of time. We wanted to enter into this pilot on a very positive, uh, no fault uh, basis. And uh, the assurances of, of the parties in wanting to achieve a basic fair uh, means in which to move forward uh, was the basis of coming to that agreement. You know, in, in conclusion, and we'll stick around for individual questions to the extent you have more, but in conclusion, um, this is something as mayor I want to see work. And I know that the Dayton wants to see this work too. I mean, for too many years, for decades of seeing EMTs and paramedics work beyond, beyond the call and to have their schedules disrupted and to have them be tired is something that's unacceptable. We want to make this work, but like any new program, we're making it a pilot for the very reasons you're asking these questions. How do we tweak it to make it work best? We could have said, let's do it permanently right up front and then tweak it, but we think the more professional, responsible way to do it is do a pilot, roll it out, see what people say, see how it works, measure, meet quarterly, if not soon or more often, adjust as we go forward, in a year's time, step back, look at it. Does it save money? I believe it's going to save money in overtime. But even more importantly than that is we want to make sure that our paramedics and our EMT folks are rested and ready to go to work, that they're happy in their jobs. They're not stressed because their schedule is beyond control. If we accomplish those two things, I think then it becomes permanent and it addresses many of the questions you're asking today before this program even rolls out. I'm positive. I think it's going to work, and I know that the working group we have right now is going to work, work really hard to make sure it does become successful. And next year at this time, I'm hoping we're announcing it's part of a permanent program. I want to thank Dayton. I want to thank his team. I want to thank all the folks in white here that work hard every day, and we're part of the negotiating team too. Mahalo to everyone. Thank you so much. We'll stick around for individual questions. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs>